Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. It is Ghost Girl Diaries. Today we're doing paranormal chat with Kat. 
It is a paranormal podcast for those of you that are brave enough to join the circle. And, oh my god, Kat, we've had a strange day, haven't we? Yeah, it's been weird. <laughs> it's been a weird one, okay. Yeah, like, we were prepared for the stream this morning. Like, we were like, oh, it's going to be a great day. Yeah, like, everything's fine. And then this afternoon, it was like, everything that could go wrong, like, went wrong at once with both of us, like, separately, literally. It's so true. It's so true. But luckily, we're like really chill. Go with the flow. Yeah, so. yeah. And that's why. Like, I had. I haven't posted on social media. I'm gonna get back in the groove of that this week. I've been um, basically pre-filming a bunch of content to upload, um, and I'm wanting to try to get like a couple of weeks ahead before I start posting again, so that I don't fall behind again. You know, because I'm famous for that. And um, Cat's lizard is currently preparing for hibernation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's going into brumation. She's gonna go sleepy sleep pretty soon. And that's what's been stressing you out is it's a it's a preparation process, right? Yeah, I mean she they do something called gut loading, so they like eat a ton of food and they run around and have lots of energy to just get rid of that energy so then they can sleep for up to six months. So mm -hmm. um she had a couple of those episodes today that um yeah, <laughs> I won't go into detail, but you I was don't want to know. But just like, yeah. just take my word for um, it that lizards are finicky. She, she's tuckered out behind me. Is so. she? She's passed out. <laughs> yeah, she gets these like yeah. giant bursts of energy where she's just like, I have to run all of this energy off, and then she like passes out. <laughs> yeah, she runs all around the apartment. She's really spoiled. <sighs> Full rain, you know, dog. You know, just saying. So anyway, that's that's what we've been doing today. So yeah, we were we were like, you know what? Even if it's not a big long stream or whatever, let's just go on anyway because we're both like workaholics and you ha you know we're both getting back in the groove of shooting content and stuff. Like, it was a stressful summer for us to say the least. Yeah, I mean, I feel we're both really creative people, so it wasn't necessarily a matter of like writing down ideas it's just the executing part mm -hmm. and when you're so busy and doing so many other things um it's hard mm -hmm. it's hard to keep up with that um because social media isn't the only thing that we you know also handle mm -hmm. so um it's just getting back into the groove of it but we're, we're in a good spot now we're in a good groove mm -hmm. crystal's been doing a lot of research and um sending me some good tips and tricks as well so it's been really helpful yeah we're trying to execute it so that we can keep up with content because we know that like staying on online with you guys whether it's tiktok youtube podcast which by the way the podcast is still like going up i'm just like shocked i'm just proud like i'm just like wow people like to hear talk shit about ghosts <laughs> you know what i'm saying like interacting with you guys like it makes yeah. us so happy to see that you you love it you know mm -hmm. we want to stay connected so we're trying to like execute this in a way of um you know in the past we'll have these like spurts where you guys know when we disappear from social media it's because of the filming side like there's something going on with the filming side so we're trying to get this planned and executed in a way that we don't have those humps where we like disappear for like a month or two at a time and then it's like so recently we like passed out for two months like literally like fell asleep for two months so it was so needed though we were also in a in a situation where you know we prepped content but then the algorithm completely changed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and that's hard because then you have to you have to go back to the drawing board and you're like okay wait i've got to rehash this mm -hmm. <laughs> we well we switched this. like instagram was the big thing and now like the hotness is TikTok. so we've had to really redo all of our planning and we're shooting for two like two social medias we have obviously my own and cat's own and then her business and then ghost girl diaries so we're trying to like it's just leveling it off so yeah but it's going good though still so it's going in the right direction now. I'm really excited. It is. Speaking of TikTok, so there's some, like, <sighs> gatekeeping's, like, a big thing with TikTok. And, like, <clears throat> I feel like gatekeeping's always been a thing. But, like, now that TikTok moves so fast, like, it's crazy because if you're not on TikTok, just go get on TikTok. Like, you'll fall. It's obsessive, okay? Like, I catch myself on there way too long. But, um... <laughs> TikTok, it moves faster than media. It moves faster than the news. It moves faster than Facebook. It moves faster than Instagram. Like you can upload a 60 second video, bam, you get 100,000 views on it. Like it's so fast. So literally it's interesting because even people that are doing regular news, like anchoring, like kids are literally becoming their own news anchors, which is fascinating to me because it's like lightning speed of when we need the information. 
Yeah, it's so cool. It's so organic. It's, mm-hmm. it's very organic over on TikTok. It sure. is, and I think that that's what changed for us, too, was when Instagram got purchased out by Facebook, it did halt, like, the authentic side of the algorithm, and it su- that sucks um, because they always, always want you to pay for ads, and, like, that's how you do promotions, and, like, with TikTok, you don't have to do that. It's, like, it's its, its own algorithm. So, anyway, um, we follow all the paranormal, like, big channels and hotness. Like, we're always on top of it, anybody that's, like, you know, uploading new content. And then when you get in that algorithm groove of... I'm in like sort of the alt gothic community mixed with the paranormal community and the witchcraft community, certain videos will start popping up. And this isn't one particular creator that we're talking about. This is like the community is when we're discussing these. So something that's sort of going on right now is something Kat and I talked about this morning. And I think it's really important to talk about not only on the paranormal aspect side, but also on the witchcraft um, side. Now, Kat's more into the witchcraft side than I am, but it doesn't mean that I haven't done spell work. It just means that she's really, like, divulged into that a lot more. So, <clears throat> something that's been going on with TikTok, um, paranormal algorithm witchcraft community, is something that's called gatekeeping. I don't like gatekeeping because um, the my first sort of taste with gatekeeping was when you have a lot of creators that start telling people don't sage don't smudge your house it should only be done by um, people that have indigenous um, heritage and i have addressed this over and over again and i don't even have to address it alone i have friends from many different tribes i'm obviously just cherokee but i have friends from several different tribes and i have this discussion with them and we all hate that people gatekeep smudging and saging because it just I, I i hate to say this but like when you see those videos when somebody says you shouldn't sage unless you're like native american descent it's always like a karen or like a white girl and i know i look like a white girl but i'm not and it's always mm-hmm. this white girl that's like you shouldn't do that like that's exclusive and like gatekeep for like the native indigenous community and it, it pisses me off because it's like let an indigenous person speak on that. Now, if an indigenous person comes in, not me, but if an indigenous person comes in and says, I don't agree with just anybody saging or smudging, they are entitled to have that opinion. I do know of one person that does not like that other people have adopted the ideology, okay? But out of my entire group of friends that are indigenous, everybody thinks it's ridiculous that it's being gatekeeped. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so that's not the only thing. That's where I, I got an introduction to the, quote, gatekeeping community. The newer thing is, there's a couple of things. There's a, there's a gatekeeping issue with paranormal now, and I'm sure that these will come up. And then there's also a gatekeeping issue that's now stepped in with witchcraft. So let's start, let's do the witch, witch, witchcraft one first, because I just feel like that's where it kind of started, and then it like sprung off from there. So the witchcraft gatekeeping issue that's happening is <clears throat> essentially people are doing um, ancestry DNA and they're getting, which Kat's getting ready to do hers. I've already done mine. I don't want opinions on it. Some people are like, oh my God, you don't want the government to have your DNA. Are you serious? They already have it. They already know my social <laughs> and they have my bank account information and I carry a smartphone. So, um, <laughs> But, uh, but I know, well, it's true. It's just stupid. And I'm, I'm just, I don't have to worry about my DNA because I'm not a serial killer. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I have an ancient uncle that did kill people, then I hope that they take him down. That's my opinion on ancestry DNA. I mean, right? Yeah. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Then don't murder people and leave your DNA behind or rape people. You know what I mean? Like, there's the answer. God. Um, anyway, <laughs> so, uh, I don't, because it's true. Um, So people are doing their ancestry DNA. They're finding out that they are related to um, Salem. Like people that were on trial in Salem or people that were uh, accused of witchcraft in Salem. And the gatekeeping thing that's happening is um, if you are related to a witch or someone from Salem, you shouldn't be proud of it because that person may or may not have actually practiced witchcraft. And why are you carrying that on down on your lineage? So you, Kat, I'm going to let you kind of take this over because, and I mean, I'll like interject obviously, but you know Salem like the back of your hand because you've been there literally as many times as I've been to the Stanley Hotel. Right. 
Right. Like, and you, like, eat, breathe, and sleep it. Like, you're literally, like, a couple hours away from Salem. Like, it's, it's been your life. You also think that you have ties to Salem as well? I do. I believe I have past life. I don't know if it was one of the accused or executed, but I do feel like there's a past life from there. I've always okay. felt a strong So do it. you think that people should, like, the gatekeeping issue is... If someone finds out they're related to someone from Salem, do you think they should not be claiming that they have which lineage because of what happened in Salem? And like practicing no, witchcraft, I, you know what I mean? Like, am I being right. clear? Like, does it, is this clear? Am I being clear about this? Yeah, like, uh, you know, I think <clears throat> that if you want to practice witchcraft and then do so, you know, I don't, I don't think that that means that you shouldn't practice it, um, you know because you have descendants from Salem, but it doesn't take away, it shouldn't take away from that, you know, the ancestry side of it. And the theory, then we talked about this this morning, is, and I've seen a couple of people talk about this um, on social media more recently, in regards to saying that if, um, you know, the people that were executed for witchcraft were innocent and they did not practice witchcraft, um, so, it's claimed you know, due to right, due to claimed. due to trail work, paperwork. What we can actually see with our eyeballs, whatever's left, is right. that they they said I'm being accused of witchcraft, but I am not practicing witchcraft, um, and then they were executed anyways, essentially. Uh, and and I guess the crazy thing too is that the only credible evidence that we would have of said person, uh, said accused person. Of doing witchcraft is them admitting to it and they had no choice but to admit to it even if they weren't um otherwise they would have been hung and those that were hung were saying that they were not witches so they say that you know if you have descent from salem like you know you should think bigger of that or you know better than that because those people weren't actually witches like don't say that you know we're the granddaughters that um of the of those you couldn't burn um yeah it's it's very muddled but I do agree on the standpoint that we talked about earlier today, which was, we don't know. Like, what if they did? Mm-hmm. We can't, we weren't there during that time, mm-hmm. you know? So, well, and we if you're being be accused dead. of witchcraft, like, and let's back up for a second. So with Salem, as we know, there was like literal witch hunts going on in Ireland, Scotland, London, Europe, um, where a lot of European countries, they were actually burning you at the stake. That didn't happen here. They were only hanging and one person was stoned, um, Mm -hmm. stoned to death. Um, But essentially, the government sort of got in on this witch hunt, and we've done streams on this, so I'm not going to go into like factual information. You'll have to find other streams. I think Kat and I did like a huge stream on this one time. But essentially, the government got in on this witch hunt deal and found loopholes, because that's what the government's good at doing. And they found out that if they accused some of which, someone of witchcraft and they were put on trial, that if they were gone from their land for X amount of days, they could actually revoke that land and put it under, like, U.S. government property. So essentially what started happening over and over again was the government was like, oh, loophole, we can just start taking everybody's freaking land, even, just, even if they're not a witch, just start accusing. But... Uh, it, was, it was, like, halfway through, too, because the first half, you know, crops were dying... They, you know, they assumed that that was because the devil was in town, you know, or like the witches were around type of thing. So when it first began, they legitimately thought that there were witches in town. But it wasn't until like a few months in um, that they started, they did start to find those loopholes. And they started to, you know, people accusing others of others that had big parts of land. And as soon as you were accused, all of that land was, was sent off to. It was seized. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't yours anymore. And that's why Giles Corey, the, um, the one who was um, pressed to death, stoned to death, um, was like, do what you will. <laughs> you know, like I have, I have it written down in papers that, you know, my land is going to go to my grandchildren. And and he was the one that was stoned because he was the one saying, I figured you out. I know what you're doing. You're taking people's land. And it slowly stopped after that. Oh, he was the last one to go, and that's mm-hmm. when people started waking up because they they were putting two and two together. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So now backing up again to like witch talk and whatnot. Essentially, um, people are saying you shouldn't go around saying that you're you know proud of your witch heritage if you are descent lineage through and ancestry DNA of Salem, because um, you're claiming you're a witch and that you're taking on you know your great grandmother's role or whatever. 
Yet, if you look in the paperwork of Salem, they said that they were not practicing witchcraft. Do you really know that? If I were being accused of witchcraft, knowing I was either going to be stoned or hung, do you think I'd walk into court and be like, oh yeah, I'm totally a witch, 100%? No. You would walk in and be like, no, I'm not a witch. I don't know what you're talking about. You're going to deny it to the hill if it means attempting to save your life. It's true. We really just don't definitively know, and that's part of the problem, um, because I I watched the the video too. Uh, A couple of of people um, were talking about it on TikTok and on um, Witch Talk, and I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't believe that you can definitively say, you know, were you in 1692? Like, did they tell you? you? Yeah. If you were, I want to talk to you. Like, if you're a time, I seriously, like, if, like, because all we have right now is paperwork from the court systems that are left over, which also, by the way, if you haven't seen it, is so fucking hard to read. It's not even funny because it's this fancy little teeny cursive. And like they didn't even know where Hallows was it was Hallows Hill till like till recently because that's not oh, even in the paperwork. Hill. Yeah. No, but my they, point they... is, is like you don't know, like if somebody finds out they're related to Salem and they want to practice witchcraft, let them fucking do it. I'm sorry. Like, who gives a shit? What skin off of your ass is it causing anybody else? Well, you shouldn't be demeaning people from them continuing on or, or, you know, saying that they are a witch in honor of their ancestors because who knows? Maybe there were, you know, things down the family line if there was lineage. Maybe they did know they were practicing. 100. Don't you think a family member down in lineage would know more if someone in their family was practicing witchcraft than just looking at court documents or factual evidence that we have from Salem? I guess don't. I don't like... The, the gatekeeping aspect of this because they people that are gatekeeping have no idea because they don't have lineage from Salem so they have no business telling other people what they should and shouldn't be doing in order to make them look stupid okay um, agreed I, but okay I, and let's play pretend and say for a second that you Kat Cormier had a family member that was on trial for Salem and you have evidence that this person was in fact practicing witchcraft although it was never publicly admitted do you are you supposed to tell the public your private family information oh no one is entitled to share anything no one's entitled to shit right no one's entitled to shit it's tricky because it's like you know it is a sensitive topic talking about these victims and it is horrible what happened and we're not saying it's not but we're what we're saying is to be mindful of spreading false information because we do not know if these the, those that were accused were witches or not. Mm-hmm. We don't know. Well, and, in and my opinion, and I'm just going to say in the beginning of, you know, Salem happening, there was there was a per- one person that started this whole witch hunt thing. And I, once again, I'm not going into details because that's not what this stream's about. But I wouldn't be shocked if the first few people accused were, in fact, practicing witchcraft. You, you realize that, once again, throwing salt over your shoulder when you're cooking is witchcraft... You realize putting up a Christmas tree is witchcraft? Do you realize knocking on wood, stirring your drink a certain direction is witchcraft? Do you realize blowing, who's blown candles out on their birthday? You realize that's also witchcraft? Like you could have been accused for anything. And once again, I just, if you do find out your lineage from Salem and there was some effing trauma that went down there, like these people were hung, Like, I mean, once again, what my podcast is about, critically think about what it would be like to watch a human being hung, taking their last breath, having a rope wrapped around their neck, losing their footing, and you have the government doing it, clapping as your aunt is is literally losing her breath, like suffocating to death. Her neck is being broke from the rope, whatever understand the family trauma that has happened in this lineage and whether they practice witchcraft or not as a granddaughter great granddaughter great niece whatever you might want to pay respects to your family no matter what by saying you know what i live in 2021 now and no one's going to stop me and i'm going to publicly practice witchcraft who knows if they're incarnated family members it could be the same person incarnated in this lifetime we talked about earlier um paying off karmatic debts and closing uh 
uh, what the ancestral trauma. Yeah. Do you want to explain yeah. what that means? Oh my gosh, that's like a whole dark rabbit hole <laughs> in itself. Um, but you know, they say there's a few different ways you can go about this. So they say that, um, you know, based off of your ancestry, that there's a certain amount of trauma that you can carry into this life. And if you are, I don't want to say chosen one, but if you are the person that decides to take it upon yourself to break those generational curses, to break that karma that past generations put on themselves or put on others, um, you know, then that's, that's going to be a hard life in this life, especially as an empath light worker. Um, your, your, some of your karma is based off of not only the things that you have done in this life or in your past life, but also tied to your ancestry as well. Mm -hmm. And that goes into a whole thing with like shadow work and of course therapy. Um, mm -hmm. the, I love that. Go to therapy. Um, but <laughs> go to it, therapy a lot. Okay. <laughs> Cause I've done it. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. I mean, do you have ancestral okay. trauma that you had to heal? Oh yes, and I'm and I'm going to be learning more about it when I do my ancestry kit next week. Mm -hmm. You know, um, especially when it comes to like colonization and stuff like that. Um, you know, and what ancestors did because a lot of our ancestors did it. I um, had a lot of ancestral trauma to heal. My family mm -hmm. was on the trail of tears. There's something called the Tao's roll. Okay, and the Tao's roll means infinitely your bloodline was on the trail of tears my family suffered genocide most of us didn't make it out so not everyone in the cherokee nation is on the dow's rolls my bloodline is 100 percent and i'm just gonna say there is a stigma around native american culture and indigenous people and the stigma is alcoholism and addiction drug addiction alcoholism so a lot of people make fun of indigenous people for having alcohol issues or drug issues. But you don't look at why. Why? Because our family barely survived genocide and they're sitting there still, most of my family still on the res, scared to leave the res because of the genocide we suffered. My grandmother was one of eight children that chose to leave the the res like i i am the chosen one unfortunately was it easy no i still have so many cousins and aunts and uncles who suffer my aunt died from alcoholism and it's a lineage trait that went down the line and and once again you're looking at salem ancestral trauma exists and if a witch decides to come out saying, I am related to so-and-so, and I'm choosing to live my truth in 2020 as lineage and surviving, let her be. Let well, her live it. You know, it was also really interesting that I think might help make some of this um, make like sense, is the person in question was talking about having lineage with the Putnams. Mm -hmm. And the Putnams, um, were a really big factor in um, accusing people. Uh, so they were the ones that that whole family were the ones, you know, pointing the finger, which not not condoning that behavior, but that was also the only other way to survive was to accuse people. So people yes, didn't do it. you're you right. Know. No, say it louder um, for the people in the back. Why you know, would you have to accuse others? Why? So you were uh, not accused. So you were not accused, literally. Bam. So you were the first one to do it. And sometimes you, you know, people would accuse others and then it would be this back and forth and then both of you are kind of screwed. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, the Putnams were, were um, very much a part of um, that whole process of the accused and accusing people. And this girl was saying that she had lineage from there and she is a practicing witch in this life. And, you know, the person that was trying to make their point It said, was stitched quite a few times from different people. Yeah, it, from different people, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um this person that was gatekeeping was saying, do your facts, boo. You know, the Putnams were the ones accusing people, so you shouldn't be proud of that. But Crystal made a really good point this morning in saying maybe she is the one on her ancestral line, lineage, to break that curse and be a witch and embody it. To, to you know, right Make those up for the ancestral trauma. Did. Yeah, exactly. And it's true, like, you know, and, and going back to what Crystal said about what this podcast is about, it's about seeing both sides and talking it out and just having a different perspective on things because that really opened up, um, 
my brain when Crystal said that this morning um, because it makes total sense. It's it karmatic sense. debts. We all owe them. You know, like, I remember I did a shadow work video on not Ghost Girl Diaries. It was on my, my personal channel, which is, like, uh, youtube.com backslash Crystal Leandra. It links in my bio, which is crystalleandra.com. But I did a shadow work video because I remember talking to Kat about this, and I was like, I'm going to do a shadow work video about, like, how you can start to start your, you know, healing ancestral trauma. And I remember Kat was like, good luck with that because people are not going to be turned on to it and it's exactly what happened I, I think it was like a 30 or 40 minute video it's a very introduction to shadow work to people that are interested in it and i can't I, i'll never forget all of the messages i got within the first 20 24 hours were like oh my god i would never want to do shadow work like i don't want to ever consider healing my ancestral like no i would rather scoop it under the rug and keep it hidden and that's a normal that's normal i'm gonna be honest that's normal and that's on their path that that you know people will will discover the shadow work and those aspects of themselves when they are ready and they have to fully succumb to that at some point so if it's not at that point then that's fine but it's gonna come eventually <laughs> or know? or you look at people who have taken on the shadow which in this case is salem that's a huge effing shadow yeah. And now you're going to you're going to criticize them for taking that shadow on whether it was the Putnams or not. That's icky. You're a bad person, honestly. Like you're not giving proper like positive energy exchange. Like if these people want to take on that, that's heavy. You're right. Working with the Putnams and and them being ac accusing all these people, you're right. But if this one person has come out out of all these people to try to take on this trauma and heal it and say the trauma stops with me, don't shame them for it. What kind of person are you pointing that kind of finger, boo? I think you need to look in the mirror. Am I wrong? Wrong. You're not wrong. It was unsolicited advice when you really don't even know that person. You know, I feel like that shouldn't have been something that was stitched. I feel like if you had concerns or you wanted to spread awareness, you would message them or DM them. And who knows? Like, maybe this person that was talking about her lineage didn't think about ancestral trauma and it was just a natural response for her to follow the craft path to right the, those wrongs like who knows mm -hmm. who knows who knows what but that doesn't give anybody else the right to tell them what they should and shouldn't be doing mm -hmm. um, in regards to their personal craft practice especially especially so. that so now going to the next chat which is the gatekeeping of baby witches Mm. Now, I'm going to admit and say I've used the term baby witch. I didn't realize that it could be used so toxically. or it, That's not even a word. To let's, let's make it a word. Toxically is a new uh, word. Um, it is. <laughs> it is now. Um, toxicity. Um, how, how do I say this without... Let me, let me think how to word this. So um, the term baby witch, when I used it, I meant for someone that had just started on the road. That didn't mean like you don't you. I know more than you. Uh, you know less than me. That's not what it meant. It just meant like oh, she's a baby. She just figured out her steps type of thing. Now with with TikTok, it's been taken and twisted a whole different direction. And this sort of goes in turn, in my opinion, with this discussion of Salem and the Putnams, because if you look at somebody who is now practicing witchcraft and maybe they are not far into their road without using the term baby witch. Now that you have shamed them in front of thousands of other people and stitched it, you might have just scared them off of their actual life path. Am I wrong? No, you're not. But here's the other thing too that a lot of these people don't understand is, and by these people I mean, you know, gatekeepers, mm -hmm. um, is that maybe she's been practicing for a few years and didn't feel comfortable coming out of the broom closet quite yet. Mm -hmm. You know, just because she's talking about it publicly doesn't mean that, like, she's also just beginning her path. Like, it's, that is a really difficult thing to be open and be proud of and to, and to literally come out of the broom closet with that. That's hard. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> honestly. I'm I getting upset. I'm getting hot. I need a, fa I need a Beyonce well, like, fan. Because oh I just feel like, you know, when I get triggered, my Aquarius moon is like, I'm ready to go. That's how I'm feeling. Um, yeah. <sighs> Well, there was a whole thing, too, for a while, like when you were talking a little bit about smudging at the beginning and it being like uh, categorized as like a closed practice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, something else that's happening on Witch Talk, too, is that they're saying that tarot is a closed practice. What? I haven't heard that one. It's a whole other story in itself. Um, I'll tell you what should be a closed practice. Shamanism. Okay. 
You ain't no shaman unless you've been chosen by the tribe. That's a that's a goddamn fact. Okay, oh so let's just get that let's just get that here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, if you want to be a father or a beacon or what's the other one? Bishop, uh, bishop, you better be going to the Catholicism over over the little pond there. Okay, there's another closed pa practice. Okay, let's talk about some real closed practices. Don't get me on my soapbox with that. <laughs> <sighs> Or cat, for that matter. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially um, when it comes to Salem. You what? I said especially when it comes to Salem. You froze. I think it's my energy. I just need to calm down. My energy's just she's frozen. Oh, your your video thing on my uh, on my channel here says like it's in the red. It's me. I'm sorry. I'm gonna just I need to breathe. It's me. I'm sorry. I emit a lot of EMFs when I get going. I probably yeah, stir my own paranormal activity up. You know what I'm saying? Is it is it unfroze? Yes, it's better now. Okay, so are you. Yeah. Okay, so I'm breathing now. So now back to just one step back, talking about uh, Salem, the Putnam's baby witches. Okay, let's just get back on that topic for a minute. Yeah, yeah. One of the reasons why I don't like gatekeeping or being blocked um, in any of those categories is because if we really look backwards, all of us, anybody that's even involved in witch talk, even the gatekeepers, if you look back to when witchcraft, you know, origins or like started, it was all about female and women empowerment, all of it, okay? And I do not believe in women cutting other women down. I don't believe women putting other women in gatekeeping boxes either. And I think that's what bothers me so bad about all the, How do you feel about it? Yeah, I have to agree. You know, we should be coming together, not apart and dictating what others should and shouldn't be doing with their craft. And, you know, this was something also I chatted about with Crystal this morning regarding the term baby witch is that, first off, we were all quote unquote baby witches at some point. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you've been on this craft path for a hot minute, you know that it is always a learning journey. It, it, you never know everything, ever. I learn something new every day in my craft practice, and I'm proud of that. You know, you want to be learning and, and active in that so you can have that wisdom to share with other people and not gatekeep them, but give them the space to choose what they decide they want to do with that information, you know, and, and maybe give them that info that they didn't know as well. So uh, it just, it makes me really upset. It makes me really upset when people use the term in a really derogatory way. And I think uh, my theory on it was that I think a lot of gatekeepers or, or uh, you know, witches in the craft community that feel the need to control and feel the need to belittle people and make them feel small because they're a baby witch. I, I swear they follow the hashtag baby witch just to sit there and like mom them mm -hmm. and put them down. And that is not what the craft community should be about mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. We should be coming together we should. Yeah, I have so many things that I could say about it. You know what I mean? Like, I remember the first time, uh, which was years ago. I can't, I can't even remember when this happened uh, and, and when it was exactly. Um, so this had to have been in my heightened uh, paranormal YouTube career. So I would say 2015-ish. I could be off a little bit, but let's just call it 2015-ish. Um, and I distinctly remember doing a stream or I'm sorry, at the time it wasn't a live stream like we do now. Um, it was an <laughs> uploaded video and in the video I said, guess what? If you like paranormal and you're into paranormal and you practice paranormal and you communicate with the dead, you are doing witchcraft. If you love ghost shows and you watch paranormal shows, you are participating in witchcraft why because it's necromancy and it was it was freeing but i remember a lot of people were like oh my god oh my yeah. god no i am not a witch and it's like why are we i saw this quote the other day online and i i know i reposted it but this is this is the big question i want to ask everybody why as a society have we been trained to be so afraid of the witches instead of the people that were hanging them and burning them. Yeah. Yeah, I see that one a lot too. And it's true. 
It's true, and that is the exact reason as to why we should be coming together. Because honestly, you know, these people putting down others and stitching them to make them feel small or stupid are just as worse as the people that were getting them ready to off them. You mean, yeah, like hang them, yeah. Yeah. And it's all it's all based on oh I have more followers than you so I'm gonna like make you look bad in front of everybody because it's gonna give me credit and I'm gonna like look good and I'm gonna like it's it's the tea and it's just it's terrible it's terrible yeah. and I think the part that scares me is it makes people afraid of the craft practice you're right there's a broom closet of coming out I remember when I told that to everybody I think half my followers zipped on me and the other half were like cool we're all witches we're in paranormal you know like what else? Yeah. right <laughs> but on that side of it like I'm so proud of my paranormal like career that I'll scream at the top of my lungs I practice necromancy with with contacting the dead like it's what I live for you know like we just won four film festivals like life is like that's what I live for I eat breathe and sleep paranormal but for people to come out and say I was one of the first paranormal big youtubers you know that like came out like discussing paranormal and that's hard for people because we've been shamed out of it in society so when these people come out on TikTok talking about their lineage and I'm a witch and I do all this and I practice and then you shame them for it, you're right. You're just like the freaking witch hunters, bro. Not supportive. That's not supportive. Um, there's other things that I've seen too, which are like the fear of Ouija boards and like I'm not going over that again. But geez, what do you want to do? You want to dip into that again? Crystal has an awesome video on that, by the way. You should go watch it. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's your plug. Just go watch the I, video. <laughs> I think, go watch the video. I think, in my opinion, that people's reactions to um, Ouija boards are one of two things. One is they have never used a Ouija board and they are kind of allowing like society to rule their mindset on it. They're like on the bandwagon of like evil, yada, yada. Or the second is somebody legitimately went through a not good situation. And for that, they have their reasons as to why they don't like it. Mm -hmm. um, but like with anything, even when communicating with spirits and using a spirit box or, you know, hosting an EVP session, um, you need to make sure that like you open and close it properly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's no saying that something still can't come forward or that you you still might have a negative experience when doing so. But it's really, in my experience in using Ouija boards, it's really rare, really rare. It's, uh, you know, I had my friend texted me a couple weeks ago uh, that was watching some paranormal show. I don't remember what it was, but um, he was like, dude, what do you think about Ouija boards? He's like, they scare the shit out of me. Like I just, uh, they scare me. And I'm like, why? Because you've watched the Hollywood Ouija movies Literally. Because well, I, because you get these TikToks and videos on YouTube of people like this this is a Ouija board from the 1600s. I'm gonna break it in half and burn it. Is that why? And you're gonna bury it six feet under. That's why you're afraid of Ouija boards. Every, every other piece of communication that we have, spirit box, is scarier to me than a Ouija board. You can oh hear the damn demon's Bring voice it. come through, and you're not afraid of a spirit box, but you're afraid of a freaking Ouija board. Yeah, a board, a piece of plastic. But you know what? It, but it's true. Like, you think about craft practice as well and, like, spell work and things of that nature. When using a Ouija board, it's the same thing. Like, intention matters. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if your intention is to mess around and summon Zozo, then guess who might pop up and don't be shocked? You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, but you have a good quote that you've been using recently that I have, like, freaking adopted because it's just so true. And your mm -hmm. quote is... If you're going looking for something, you're going to find it. You're going to find it. If you're looking for trouble, you're going to find it. And don't be shocked when that happens. And I'm not saying that that's not a scary experience for, for said person or, you know, not devalidating their experience. But it's true. It, it is just the truth of it. Well, and it's um, energetically. I mean, that's like the law of attraction, which we've talked about that on here, too. But if you're... Yeah. Um, let's say you're going into a location and you're like, I want to find Zozo or I want to find a demon. You are already vibing at that level. You're already vibing at the level of the demonic stuff. So guess what? You're going to find it because you're vibing at that level. You're trying to attract it towards you. It's like magnets. Yeah. Um, but like, we also have a, a new theory that we've recently adopted on demonic activity. Yes. We've both experienced demonic activity. 
but the new theory that we have on it, um, which is another sort of gatekeeping thing of like, oh my God, don't go into a cemetery. You might run into a demon. Like, don't go into, and it's like, what? Where the hell did like, you come from? a coyote, <laughs> more than to a demon, honestly. No, but really, no. you're like, what? Like, where, where do these people come up with? Like, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Um, in our opinion, we think that like you know you have humans and like our human like spirit form and then you have angels right if you believe in angels and then if you believe in spirit guides that's another sector and if you believe in different types of aliens like you could have reptilians and architarians and lyrans you have those beings those are all their own, own energetic levels then you have things like trolls and gnomes and leprechauns which i've ran into weird things like that at the stanley hotel and then you have demons why does everybody put the demon category into the dark because of a bible that was written how many hundreds of years ago however long ago and it's been reinterpreted how many times and which form of the bible have you read okay i'm calming down i'm sorry um, well it's true like every every being and species has a class yes like the human race we got the star seeds we got aliens i don't know maybe, maybe mesh aliens indigo and children together. the grays and, you know, the greens yeah true. right you know and there are going to be good ones and there are going to be bad ones mm -hmm. i i know of people i i'm not friends with them um but i have acquaintances that i follow on tiktok that worship demons mm -hmm. or demons however you pronounce it someone correct me if i'm wrong um and it's fine <laughs> it's fine literally it's fine it's like any normal deity deity well it's just, it's it, it, what we're saying is i'm not as afraid of a demon as i am of what humans can do have you seen what we've done to this planet have you seen what we've dark done to each demon. other and you're gonna sit cool. here and tell me that a human spirit can't be as dark or as bad as a quote demon you can do everything here on hell that you've talked about in the fucking bible i'm sorry but you know what i mean like it's, it's true so my point is, and Kat, this is our new theory that we've adopted, is, you know, demons are their own category, yes. I th are they from a lower underworld? Probably, right where, like, fairies, gnomes, and stuff like that sit. But they're their own class, like human spirits. I think there's good ones or okay ones, and then not so okay ones. How do you, like, decide which one? I don't know. I'm not in that realm. But I'm just... <laughs> research yes but research. but you know there's been gatekeeping with like don't don't paranormal investigate because you're going to bring in a demon oh for god's sake jesus lord you're telling me that you don't think the human spirit of ed gein isn't a demon he was like dismantling human beings in his garage over a cauldron wearing their skin suits you don't categorize him as a demon do you know what i'm saying do you get where i'm going with this are I you do. picking up I what i'm putting down you know what i'm saying <laughs> It's silly. It's silly, honestly. I mean, you can't avoid it anyway. I mean, e even when investigating, you could go to a location that has some pretty hefty paranormal activity that's not necessarily dark, but there's some stuff going on, and you could run into a demon without realizing it, mm -hmm. you know? Like, or it could be a, dark a darker entity there, not even necessarily a demon. Like, you don't know what you're going to bump into. Um, do you know how many times I've worked on the Ouija board? And like, I mean, honestly, like, I'm not even talking like legitimate. Um, like sometimes there, I've been to locate like places where it wasn't even like a planned investigation. It was like, I literally went to a, a ghost hunt for a birthday party one time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so it was just yeah. for fun. But yeah. you know how many times I've been on the Ouija board and something comes through and it spells out Zozo? Oh my God. That happened. It did. Happen it it did. Vegas? Yeah, it did. Yeah. And what did I do? What did I do? I I called it out. You did. Yeah, I, I remember that. That was actually the day, by the way, in case anyone wants to hear a positive experience on a Ouija board, mm -hmm. um, I communed with my spirit guide. Mm -hmm. yep. She told me your name mm -hmm. and how many possible past lives I've had. And it was a very pleasant experience. I did not feel any semblance of like low vibrational energy, no nothing. Um, I'd do it again. And I have energy, a Ouija board. Energy speaks for itself, though. When it came yeah. through as, quote, Zozo which is the you demon did, of did. the Ouija board. Yeah. How did that feel in the room compared to the day that you went to see Annabelle? Like nothing. Yeah. 
nothing. And, and a lot of these times, like, it's probably not even Zozo. It's just an entity trying to fuck with you, you know? And, and see, <laughs> Jesus, cat. You're like, right. let me tell you what it is, okay? Well, it's true. Like, you know, like, and, and your response of, like, is what's going to fuel that activity more? Mm -hmm. It's going to, you know, mm -hmm. vibe off of that. Mm -hmm. Crazy. <sighs> Craziness. Anyways, I'm done with my soapbox at this point. You know it's what I mean? Frustrating. But you know what? each their own i do i think own. i think the fear of ouija boards is ridiculous i know robert merch he has like the the world's largest look him up um he has like the world's largest um ouija collection literally i think he owns like 300 or 500 boards in his house where he has like a mini museum do you know what I'm live. huh east where does coast he live? east coast i think like east coast yeah because, yeah i've seen i think he's come to salem a few times there's also a, a ouija board museum in salem oh i didn't know that but yeah, he yeah. says he has no activity in his house whatsoever. So I just think the fear of it is absolutely absurd. Once again, I'm shocked that you're willing to like use a, a spirit box and not a Ouija board. Like it's ridiculous. There's also another thing going on on TikTok where you shouldn't use a Ouija board. You shouldn't go to a cemetery to use a Ouija board because it's holy ground, and a Ouija board is like a dark communication device. And I'm, but yet you but you can use anything else. You can use a spirit box, you can use an you know, EMF meter, a ML meter, whatever, but don't take the Ouija board because it's holy lit. Like, what, do you want to? Thing, though, again, if you're visiting a deceased loved one, it's, it's all about your intention mm -hmm. and, and, and setting your intentions and being respectful of the space. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, I don't think there would be anything wrong with that if you were setting your intentions and being respectful of the space and energy doesn't lie you would know if an entity did not want to communicate with you i would Honestly. like to know like i'm like i'm gonna have like my fellow paranormal investigators that listen to this are gonna laugh because like i would like to know how many of you that are paranormal investigators have not used a ouija board in a in a freaking graveyard because i feel like that was one of my first experiences like of course, if you're 15, 16, you can't go to an expensive planned ghost hunt and you want to go experience paranormal activity, the easiest first place you're going to go is a friggin' cemetery at night with a Ouija board. Why? Because it's $10 at Kmart, Walmart. You know what I mean? Like, I miss Kmart. Oh, yeah. They Are close. they around? No, I don't think so. The oh, I miss on. Kmart. Now you're but upset right. about Kmart. <laughs> But it's true, you only have to be eight to use one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can eat eight to summon a demon, and, you know, 16 to drive, 21 to drink, it's fine. The fear, the fear surrounding it, yes, absolutely is crazy. People's experiences, and if that's their opinion on it based off their crappy experience, that's one thing. Yeah, but, but I feel like if you were that scared using the Ouija board to begin with, you just shouldn't have been there, period. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, mm -hmm. like if, if you were scared of anything to happen on the board, like, you shouldn't be ghost hunting, like, at all. Because it's just, it's well, just silly. And it's possible if, if you were fearful using a Ouija board that that could have resulted in some negative experience. Yes! Energy, no. Mm -hmm. Spirits, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, in other words, when you're vibing at a level where you're, it's a fear-based issue, they are going to know... And, yeah. like, I think people forget, too, when you go in to investigate, you can set boundaries. You can say, spirit guides, whoever's with me, I'm asking that nothing dark comes in, period. There's a boundary. You've put up an energetic boundary. Mm -hmm. And it works. Mm -hmm. Every time. Every time. I know. I remember in Jerome, I took a St. Michael medallion with me. Mm -hmm. And so did Aaron, my, my teammate, who was on the show with me, the tall, skinny guy. Yeah, and yeah. Aaron, uh, we got separated at one point where we all three, they didn't show all the footage because obviously it was just too much to edit. But Aaron and I talked before we went in. He's like, oh, yeah, I've got this St. Michael medallion. Like, I'm not going to have, like, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be safe. And I took it and I was like, yeah, I'm going to be safe, but I want anything to be able to interact with me. So I don't care. So when Aaron went by himself, he literally got nothing on camera, literally. He got no EVPs, no video footage, no evidence, no, he took still photos. That's my dog, sorry. And then also, I went with a St. Michael medallion and had no issue whatsoever. I got all kinds of evidence. Right. So once again, it's intention. It's energetic intention. So, like, he thought he'd be safe with the St. Michael medallion in his pocket. Well, he was so safe that he didn't experience any activity. You know what I mean? 
that's interesting. But you and I kind of had that too when we filmed the pilot. Yeah. You were well, scared. You were like, because it was like your first official, not like scared, but like it was, it was the camera. It was like the legit setup. Like it was the thing. Uh, yeah. And that too, you know, I mean, the energy in that place was just nuts. And we went in, I think, didn't we, did we have the Ouija board? No, we had the Melmeter and, uh, and the did, Ovulus. Ovulus. And you were like frozen because you were nervous. And while we were in there, it took you like an hour to finally like, okay, I can't, I can't bubble up the whole time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the whole time we didn't hardly get any evidence at all. Mm. Cause you were just like, Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. And then when you let that down, we got like the camera being thrown. We got like the all the activity in the bathroom i got called a bitch by a spirit on camera like we got a lot of stuff so yeah, once you well, we had to stay in the room mm -hmm. that huffed and puffed oh yeah he was like <laughs> he must feel like, really cat was like is anyone with us and he was like oh god I'm just, like, it was over this as a ballot he was just like and chris oh. and i turned and they were like did you is he annoyed with us like what, <laughs> what the heck he was actually annoyed shit so yeah i mean we, we're all sick of our shit at that point that night it was a rough house oh god the whole house was falling yeah, it was into a rough house. it was rough i don't ever want to go back there again which is i think that how that the pilot episode is what triggered me so bad with destination fear mm -hmm. because it was literally like condemned and was falling in the ground and i can't imagine getting around that house without a flashlight oh the what the one that we were at yeah there were holes in the ground. I know. But literally, the mines were still in the ground with a plank of wood over it. <laughs> like, yeah, no, guys, like, it, it, in the bathroom of where we filmed, if you looked out the window, like, I'm talking, like, not even a foot was a hole in the ground. It went down into the mines that were underneath the house. So, there was a recent death in there, too. It was, like, I think it was, like, 2007. Remember, a little mm -hmm. girl died? Yeah, well... Fell. I mean, it should have been condemned, honestly. I didn't know how bad it was till we got there, and I was like, oops! Well, it was good. It was awesome. The deer were cute. The, the deer, deer were cute. cute. Yeah. Yeah. There was a drug deal gone bad next door, too. That was dangerous. Cat was filming I it. I came out. I was like, oh, my God, this is great. And Crystal's like, get in the car. Cat's got her, her camera mount. And she's like, I'm going to get this. And I'm like, Cat, it's a drug deal. Someone's going to get a shot. I need you to get in the car and close the door, okay? And she was still like, I'm going to get this. I like the tea. Oh it's like dangerous tea. It was really bad. I was like, let's go. This is not safe. <laughs> Jesus. We never left so fast. I think I still had the door slightly open when we like zipped out of there. It was hilarious. That Because everything was packed. We were done. That was the last day to shoot. I was like, I am let's over go. this shithole. Let's go. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. At least we know Kat will always hit the record button film. You know what I mean? true even in dangerous situations you always make sure that record button's going you know what i'm saying pretty basic <sighs> pretty basic yeah. stuff you know what i'm saying so um next topic what do we want to do that was it uh, i'm off my soapbox on the yeah on the first half so roundup is let people do whatever the f they want long well, story short mm -hmm. who cares if it's a putnam practicing witchcraft Gives, and once again, what if they were practicing witchcraft and only the lineage has, like, the actual information on it? You don't know this. Maybe they were accusing people because they were witches. Amen, sister, okay? No. Who knows? Jesus no Lord. one knows. We were not in 1692, therefore we Honestly, cannot Honestly, who gives a shit who's doing what? Do you give a shit who's practicing witchcraft? No. I mean, as long as you're not, like, hurting people. Well, you know. I'm ruled by Aquarius, so if anyone wants to spell me, um, I'm ruled by karma, and it's just going to come back to you, like, times five, so be my guest, because I like the show, you know what I mean? <laughs> your mic? Oh, there you are, okay, I was like, your mic went out. Okay. Did it? There, ooh, that was, that was like phone sex operator status right there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, um... Oh, I've missed a bunch of comments. I'm sorry, guys. I was on a freaking soapbox for like an hour. It's hard to get me off of those with my Aquarius moon. You know what I mean? Like, out though. Huh? This is what we do. 
What, get on soapboxes? Yeah, it's fun. I'm sorry. It just happens, you know? Let's see. Um, I have a life over death crucifix from the 1800s. That's a mood. Ooh, that's a mood. <laughs> that's probably all of us have one of those or two, tw- you know what I mean? Like, once you start accessing your Akashic records, you're like, damn, I've done some shit. You know what I mean? Like, whew. Be 20. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> I said I need 20. <laughs> oh, my God. It's fine. Yeah, nobody wants to go through my Akashic records, okay? It's rough. Um, I'm like, why am I here again? Oh, I remember now. No. Um, so, AHS, like, we should chat about this because it is cool. Like, they come up with some really cool characters, and I don't think people realize how much really goes into all the characters that they've developed and, like, inspiration by. Yeah, it's sure. probably one of my favorite scripted paranormal series. Agreed. I mean, it can get dark though. Yeah. Like there were some some episodes of Hotel. I was like, mm, just can't. I the only season I couldn't get through was Asylum, and I'm telling you right now, I think it's just an empath thing. When there was just some like electroshock therapy going on it hurt me Mm -hmm. um it i couldn't get through it Mm -hmm. i had a horrible headache every time i watched it and it wasn't from the screams do you think that's like past life shit though now that we're talking about that that's creepy yeah because i felt like (laughs) i could watch everything else i i literally watched everything else and was totally fine and this show is like bloody (laughs) like there's some like rapey scenes in the hotel that i could not get through and it was just like, whoa, this has got to be past life thing or something. You know what I mean? Like, it was like, it hit way too close to home. Yeah, that's how I felt in Asylum, which mood, also mood. And I was Maybe like, was I mean, I'm just saying. So anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's good. But like, it's almost too good. Mm. Do you think that's like a good way of putting it? Because it's like, the scenes are like so accurate that you do get like transferred into them. Like, I think that's what was so hard. Like when I started watching Coven... I, I was, like, not paying attention because it was so good. Yeah. And then I realized, like, with the madame, you know, like, Lalori was in it involved, like, that character. And I was like, oh, my God, I need to really watch. Like, you can't be on your phone. Like, I'm really bad about watching movies or, like, episodes of something. I'll be on my phone scrolling through social media, like, as I'm watching. Or I'm, like, playing Candy Crush as I'm watching. And I do feel like AHS is one of those. Like, they have so many, like, packed, minute details that, like, you yeah. can't not, like, you have to watch every second of it. You know what I mean? It immerses you into their world, into that time period. Mm-hmm. It's so well done. And um, you every every ounce, even the little things, make sense at the end. Yeah, cinematography-wise, because a lot of people ask me this, um, like, you know, obviously I've given my opinion on the documentary side. Cinematography-wise, for something that's scripted, this is if I ever divulged or like dipped my toe into the scripted world it would be something like AHS I would direct something like AHS like hands off to the cinematographers the producers the ADs like oh my god like they have that shit down and it is so freaking good because it just looks perfect and it does tell a story through the eyes of a time when that actually happened like Madame LaLaurie was like legit in Louisiana like that was real and like she would kill her slaves and like torture them and it's it was I guess it does in a way bring awareness don't you think I think so yeah telling the story it's messed up especially in a time where people are so like desensitized to just like not caring and like being like living very like narcissistic selfish lives you know what I'm saying yeah a lot of and a lot of these characters too guys because there's so many we have chatted about in the past just like a separate podcast so if we don't dive del- uh, dive deep <laughs> into some of these characters we do have podcast episodes on them um on a few of them somebody so. just gave me another message here it says uh, i'd rather deal with de- demons than evil humans amen amen yep i'll say that i've been around demonic activity a lot not not as much as they portrayed on tv like please just it's just not but um ed Gein. I don't have a problem with his energy personally, but I can see, like, you got sick in there, didn't you? Get sick in Ed Gein's room? Yeah, and then I had a dream when I came home. So I can see where human spirits are, like, to me, way worse than any 
dark thing that I've encountered personally. That's just me. But that's somebody who's been involved with it for a long time and who's experienced it. You know what I mean? Like, it's weird, though, because I get a lot of dark stuff or, like, what's what would be proclaimed as demonic activity. It doesn't like me. I repel it. I've said that for years, and I continue to. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because my energy is so loud or high vibrational. I don't know if it's because of I'm a liar in. I don't know if it's because... Um, I was baptized when I was baby. I don't know if it's because of my indigenous heritage, but I repel it. It doesn't like me, but I do chase it because I'm interested in it. I want to encounter it. I want to know what it's about. Um, Kat, it comes to you pretty freely. It does, and I'm also baptized. So that's not it. So let's eliminate that one. Yeah, we're just going to eliminate that one. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it is interesting. It sure. is weird. Yeah, and it scares you. Like, you get scared. I do, but I do have to say after Annabelle, um, I am feeling more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And and I think that going, I'm really excited to get into more investigations, um, to have that opportunity to experience more, you Mm -hmm. know, and do more. Um, But yeah, it's, it it is weird. It does attract to me. I know. I wonder if it's because you're like innocent and you do come across very like, you're not really the newbie anymore, but you do come across as like, I'm the innocent. You are like the good witch out of all of us. Like, you know what I mean? So it does yeah. make you wonder if that's why it, like, it attracts you for some reason. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, Elfie gets, like, but it, I don't know. Elfie says she always tries to go after, like, crawlers and they, they never. That's true. You know, so I don't know. Maybe it's just your inner, yeah. your, your vibe and their level. Great. It's <laughs> like, do you want a hat? Do you want a hat? And they're like, oh my god. This can I knit shit. you a demonic hat? Please, like, here saying. is a demonic hat. Here's a Krampus hat. Look, can we be um, friends? Just because I don't want you to follow me home, okay? I'm like, going like, knit you some mittens. Okay? Do you just need some mittens? Are you, are you having a tantrum? Okay. <laughs> All right, we have so, another comment. Crystal and Kat, I recently left another sort of belief. I started out as a Christian, then became agnostic, then full-blown atheist as well as Satanist. I'm trying to learn from all the faiths. Any advice? Um, don't follow a faith research and find what resonates for you yeah but i i don't like um organized religion period um mm-hmm. kat and i recently did uh join the church of is it the church of, no not the church of satan what is it called it, the temple uh, of satan temple of no satan? i think i think it is the church of satan. Right, wait, wait a second i'm not gonna wait. say it because i i last time i screwed myself so hang on please stand by elevator music <laughs> I gotta go on TikTok and look it up. Hang on, just stand by. Oh, Temple. Temple of Satan. Wait, are you right? Are you sure? I'm looking now. Temple of. I'm gonna make sure it's right, because last time I screwed it up and I got. Satanic Temple. The Satanic Temple. The Satanic Temple. Okay. Yes, that's correct. So we have now joined the Satanic Temple. Um. And they don't, they don't believe in Satanism, uh, or like Satan as a deity, right? Isn't that, isn't that correct? Like they don't, they don't Satan. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they're all for women's rights, LGBTQ, um, and they fight for rights for women and for LGBT, which, um, Elfie's LGBT and Kat and I are for women's rights. So yes, we did actually officially join the, the Satan temple, the satanic temple. Yeah. Making sure this is right. So it's thesatanictemple.com because I don't want to screw this up because you don't want to join the Anton LaVey one. Okay, because that's a bad one. Um, it's an Airbnb and it's like stunning. They have an Airbnb? It's stunning. But I'm going to check for hidden cams because I just don't trust a mofo. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, okay? That's true. Okay. But I'll go. Um, so yeah, we did. We joined uh, the Satanic Temple. Um, and the reasons why is because we support and we have donated towards their cause for women's rights. Um, but yeah, we don't join, uh, we don't join, we don't follow faiths. Um, and that's because we've had bad experiences. Cat has been Catholic, Catholic and followed Catholicism her whole life, which she still loves parts of it. Um, but we don't believe in organized religion because I, uh, think it's bullshit. <laughs> Honestly, like how else do you, it, you want to word it better? That's your soapbox. Go ahead. The St. Michael aspect of it. He's my homeboy. Mm-hmm. That's about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hashtag that, religious trauma. That could <laughs> be real. a, that could be a whole nother stream that I don't have time that for. It's a rant in itself. That's like a five hour. <laughs> <laughs> your five hour <laughs> podcast. I was baptized catholic raised catholic then ra- we we hopped around a lot we, so i was catholic and then 
Episcopalian. Mm -hmm. And then... Which one is that? Is that the deeper one than Catholicism? That one is actually the more inclusive. Oh, so it's like Lutheran to Christianity. Correct. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I was Anglican Mm -hmm. for a while. Um, And that's kind of where it, like, ended. Um, And then was, like, a Sunday school teacher. No, you're Satanist. (laughs) Turn pagan with that. Um, that's fine. And again, Woo! like you can join, like you can join the t- um, Church the of Satan, temp- the Temple of Satan, or the Satanic Temple's free. You don't have to pay anything to be a part of it. Yeah, um, you just join, and it, it was for advocacy for women's rights. Yes. Um, I was baptized Lutheran. I was raised Lutheran. I, What's that? I didn't know you were baptized Lutheran. Yeah, I was baptized Lutheran. Maybe that's why they're scared of me. Lutherans are a little bit more Bible something, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, I was raised Lutheran, but also uh, implemented with a lot of indigenous culture from my grandmother. She really pushed that on me. And um, as I got older, we kind of separated from that. Uh, my mom really only baptized me uh, because I was dead when I was born. And she basically promised me to be a child of God when I died to make sure that I lived because they didn't think I was going to live. So that was when she took me to get baptized. So that was the part of it. So, um, but yeah, I, I just don't like organized religion. That's just the damn truth. I don't, I, I could go into details about it. I love the St. Michael thing too. I love archangels. There are certain things with Catholicism, like they're the only, um, you know, ideology of like religion that believes in uh, demonic possession that talks about it publicly. So yes, I obviously, you know, there's, I, I take, I'm ecleptic, I guess. I take things I like of certain things, but I feel like there's a lot of things I don't like from organized religion too. Um, like how the Catholic Church could literally cure world hunger with the amount of money that they get from donations. And instead they just sit on it and they hide all the, you know, they've done all these supposed possession uh, releases with exorcisms, but they won't release the files publicly. You know what I'm saying? Sketch. Just part sketch. Me, yeah, they're all in Vatican. Yeah. The Vatican. Yeah. Um, part of me thinks that, and this is just a conversation in itself, but a lot of me, a lot of my viewpoints on the Catholic Church and like that money, I feel goes towards legal. Oh, it does. It, where I'm going with that. But um, yeah, they molest little boys and they go, yeah, the legal goes to that 100. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Nothing. you know, with and then the, like, the Anton LaVey is a little too dark. We've we've studied that church part. That's the darker side of Satanism. Then you have the Satanic Temple and it, honestly they they don't really do a whole lot other than like advocate for religious rights, religious freedom rights, which is like women's rights, LGBT, so that's why we like that. Um, we have donated to it, to the cause, and we've obviously joined the temple. Does that mean we're going to be going to the satanic temple every Sunday for church and stuff? No, I don't think so. Um, but once again, we're taking things that we like, and, and that's what we do. So my biggest advice is don't follow one religion, because I don't know how people would be able to. I, there's, I've never found something that I've fully believed in. I think you also need to research and look within yourself and decide uh-huh. what you believe within you. Yeah, give yourself the space to research and find what resonates with you. And it's Mm -hmm. not going to happen overnight. No. So, you know, like, and there might, you might find something that resonates with you now. And then two years from now, you switch it up. And that's okay, too. Mm -hmm. There's really no right or wrong. And that's the beauty of the freedom of the craft path or any type of spiritual path in general. So I'm going to tell you, though, if you, if you already celebrate Christmas at all, packages or a tree, you're already pagan. Like, I feel like... 90, 98% to 100 people that are listening right now are already pagan. So, in fact, probably <laughs> United States wide, possibly worldwide. If you celebrate Christmas, boo boo, you're pagan. So, I'm just putting that out there, too, you know. Um, but yeah, pagan's also different from you don't have to like study witchcraft if you're a pagan. So, it's very fine lines. Not every pagan's a witch, but not, you know, like it goes both ways. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it can be like earth earthy and like spiritual doesn't have to be like spell work but once again you have to research it so yeah that could be we should do a podcast on that we should talk about different religions but i feel like we'd piss a lot of people off that sounds like fun we already do so might as well keep the track record going (laughs) join the club we're just sharing an opinion Mm -hmm. yeah i just don't like organized religion i don't like the catholic side because they don't let you get on birth control and like you you breed like rabbits i just don't think it's appropriate so 
Like, I mean, if you want to breed like rabbits, do get it. You know what I mean? Get that booty. But I don't think that it should be based on a priest telling you that because it's religion. Does that make sense? Or that you should. Or that you should or you can't use birth control. Like, you know what I mean? Like, dude, just... Anyway. Messed up. Yeah. Anyway, that's all. Soapbox again. It's Jesus. Fuck. We're, we're literally like all off track tonight. It's fine. That's how the day's been. You know what I mean? It, oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. All right. Um, American what, Horror Story. Yeah. What do you want to talk about first? Murder House. I, yeah. Like I'm trying to look at the. I'm looking at the first link on the notes. Um, the loop. I like that they've they've incorporated a lot of stuff, but like they also had sort of um, a Lizzie Borden facade that they used as well. Um, the Lizzie Borden is when she obviously killed her stepmother and then her dad with an axe. Um, mm-hmm. I, I know that we're having issues with the Lizzie Borden stuff right now, but I really would like to go there to experience the location. I won't be able to now because I told everybody to boycott it. But I mean, someday. If, if we can pay enough money to get in there, which I'm sure they would never say money talks, you know what I mean? But um, I would like to just experience... Have you ever been there? Been past it. I've never been in. Mm-hmm. Fall River. Fall River, Mass is an interesting little town. Oh. Is it like Connecticut and like creepy and weird? Connecticut's a whole other world. Uh, <laughs> Connecticut is literally its own energy. Uh, if you're in New England, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, Fall River is just like really creepy it's just, i've always f- gotten a really creepy vibe from fall river mass really you think it's just like a dark portal or something i think it's just i think there's just some shady shit that's always gone on in that area hmm. uh, even outside of lizzie borden so is it a port area is it like a port area not the area i went through mm. i went through literally like the center of town oh, okay. and up on my left hand side when I was driving because I've noticed I don't know how you feel about this because you, you're east coast so you know but I've, I've noticed like a lot of port towns are very strange energy yeah well think of the water you know EMFs and stuff well like the that. water but they also would bring in slaves through the port towns and then like weird stuff like even the Shanghai tunnels up in like Oregon where like they were putting like human trafficking and stuff like they're I, ports are weird places it's weird too because in Portsmouth we literally have like a Portsmouth and um, Hampton Beach as well. Like lots of areas that were near water also had train tracks. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, you know, dumping bodies everywhere left mm-hmm. and right, using the train, messed up. So what? They would like get on the train and then die, or that someone would murder them on the train, um, or just throw their bodies there, like grab their tracks and just like throw the body from the train into the water. What? messed up this sounds like a movie we need to write a script on this elfie i need you to write a script elfie are you watching oh she just got in elfie's on vacation hey boo we love you elfie (laughs) she's like oh god guys stop um (laughs) yeah so okay so we've agreed maybe that's what we need looking for locations port towns we haven't put that on the list i'm writing it down right now. note that shit because that's a good idea like we're always like oh lighthouses or like brothels port towns that's true i would love to do like veteran abandoned hospitals too especially after what um that one idiot show did like butchered them but they're hard to get into sometimes i mean we why we do have a connection that we could get in but it's still it's just like anyway um so what was your favorite um season of of ahs I really liked, I mean, I really liked Coven. Yeah, that's my fave. Um, but I also liked Hotel. Really? Yeah. <sighs> I know, it's really messed up, but I liked it because I like Lady Gaga too. <laughs> maybe I need to, maybe I need to try to get through it. Yeah, try to push through it. Try to push through maybe it. Maybe I'll research the episodes ahead of time and then decide which ones I can deal with. Yes, do that. I did that for some of them too because some of them were like, whoa. Oh. But it's weird because. There was one episode that had like, you know the rapey I know. person I know exactly with like talking. a metal thingy okay yep. with spikes yep. and yeah. i was like nope that was where i was like done shutting it off done can't so, i know it's really messed up but like i could get through that season better than i could asylum see i, I watched asylum not. and it, i mean it's messed up but like okay the one good thing with i feel like asylum is like every paranormal investigator needs to watch it and that's because you need to understand, like, because you had, like, the demon things also, like, living under the tunnels or whatever. 
or mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it, like I don't outer worldly right. be whatever they were but like yeah. you I think it's so important because like that literally like drops that fourth wall of understanding when you go into asylum what these people mm-hmm. suffered from like don't go in and be like oh is there a demon here come get me like there's a more chance there's going to be an actual person that was like brutally like tortured or a nurse or a doctor that's still lingering rather than a demon you know like why do we always focus on that and i'm sorry but the doctor once again why are we creating fear around a demon creature and we're not afraid of the doctors and nurses who were torturing the people same thing as Salem. Why are we not? Af- why are we afraid of the wrong people here, guys? True. I'd be more afraid of running into the doctor and the freaking nurse. Like it's like House on Haunted Hill. Do you remember that movie? Oh my God, that was good. That was good. We should find that place and investigate that. Ooh. Ooh. Put that on the list. Locations of movies, sets. That's a good one. Cause like they said, Exorcist was like haunted and whatnot. I'm sorry, guys. This is how Cat and I conversations go. We're like, oh, I have another idea. Let's do it again. I have so many notes. It's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> I have notes for my notes. Um, I do. So, okay, LaLaurie was part of New Orleans, obviously. I think the Elfie and I have talked about LaLaurie. And she was, like, the slave owner. And, like, there was a little girl that ended up dying, right? Like, that's when she was finally investigated. But she would – people would investigate her, like, the public. This is when slavery was a, still an appropriate thing. And Mm -hmm. she would abuse these slaves, and then they would take the slaves away, and they'd put them back on the auction house, and LaLaurie would go back and repurchase her slaves. So, so dark. So dark. Can you, like, oh my god, once again. This is, like, the, the part I love, is, like, critically thinking about this. Imagine being the slave that you've been tortured, starved, beat, like, near death somebody saves you the government comes in and saves you you go back up on the block for auction and the same bitch buys you jesus really like she's sick man oh my god she was dark she was really bad the friggin demon (laughs) but kathy bates did amazing playing her in my opinion totally totally so she lived in this like white socialite and obviously kathy bates was a part of this was in coven it's like literally the first episode i think isn't it that mm-hmm. she's like introduced her character and yeah. um they they don't know like there's so much speculation around this and this goes back to like the gatekeeping thing again because mm-hmm. we have stuff in the books yeah but we don't know what really happened like there's also theories that maybe she was like sleeping with some of her slaves and like she was into like really bad like S&M and she like enjoyed like beating them and cutting them and hurting them we don't really know. Like, okay, for example, take your own life. Like mine, literally, I have a book that I wrote. Like, this is my love stories. But do you think everything that's happened to my life is in this one book? No. 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 And I'm, I'm going to write more books. And do you think everything is going to be in those books? Do you think I've shared every single thing I've gone through in the world on social media and on YouTube? Oh, gotta keep some things private. You do, but that's my point, is like, even with the Salem thing, is like, okay, you're gonna go off on this tangent and be like, oh yeah, you don't know, you know, oh, they they weren't witches. You can't claim witchcraft because they weren't witches. Do your history, boo. You don't even know. None of us know what people really were like. We don't know. We didn't live in that time. It's true. That's what drives me crazy, and like, that's why it's so important when you do your history. When Kat and I filmed for the pilot, which is one for, um, for film festivals holler 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 i'm sorry i'm just <laughs> so, so proud. proud i'm so proud. so proud um but yeah we won four film festivals for this pilot but we had done accurate history like kat and i had been researching for months we, when we got on set we even went to the local library that was like an hour away like we did the thing we mm-hmm. called you called the historian too didn't you or something like literally times yeah try to get information so when we got we were like ready we're like we have this location we've got this down and then we get there and guess what none of the history mattered because the evidence that we got wasn't even related to the history that we did yeah the entities had their own story to share and you should let them Mm -hmm. and it's really it, it it's crazy to me because you see these paranormal shows that are always constantly flopping and it's for a reason just let the freaking ghosts tell the story it's really not that hard it's not. If you give them the space to listen and shut up, you know, 
you'd be surprised what would come forward. You mean you shouldn't put, like, you know, a veteran ghost in a box and then go outside and blow it up like the Tennessee Wraith Chasers did? Calling it a demon. You can't blow up a ghost. <laughs> or can you? I don't know. I don't you know. Can't. I don't know. You can't. You can't. I don't. I don't. Once again, I'm also more afraid of the Tennessee Wraith Chasers at this point that they think that they can destroy energy because that's playing God. Know. Once again, rather hang like, out with a demon than chill with people that think that they can play God. So anyway. Um, do you like fire? Like, is that why you're doing that? Like, do you like blowing up things? I don't really understand. I don't know what their gimmick was, but I, I couldn't get through it. I couldn't stomach it. Honestly, it was just annoying. Yeah. And once again, I'm sorry, but it, if there was something angry there, it wasn't a demon. It was a pissed off veteran that had PTSD from Vietnam. And, and you, you just, just tried to blow him up, and now he's more pissed. It's true. <laughs> it's so sad. Anyways, so sad. Um, Voodoo Queen, uh, oh my god, was played by Angela Bassett, which is Marie Laveau. Oh my god. Obsessed. Yeah. Laveau. Really. Depends on how you say it, but... I, I've done research on her so many times. I hope someday that we can go to her. Um, that's one of Elfie's places that she wants to get to is Louisiana. She loves the history of Louisiana and New mm -hmm. Orleans. And her um, gravestone is still like heavily worshipped to this day. But they, you can't find it, I've heard, unless you actually go to Louisiana. Because it was destroyed a couple of times. It was like defaced. So you have yeah. to sort of ask questions, and then, like, people will lead you to it that are, like, locals. You can't really look it up online. True. Um, oh, man, this is a good one. We've talked about this before. Papa Legba. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. That was a good one. That was portrayed perfectly, don't you think, in Coven? Yeah. Just the right amount of creep, too. You know, creepy, but also understanding, like, the undertone of what he was there for yeah so he's supposed to be like this gatekeeper of like the underworld and then there was like this stuff that happened on social media this girl supposedly this white girl supposedly summoned him and everyone was like yeah that's what she gets for summoning him he killed her he was a gatekeeper he wasn't a murderer like you know what I mean? once again right. if, if we're gonna i don't know if papa like was a demon but if we're gonna play pretend and just put him in that category i don't think he'd be one of the darker ones he's a gatekeeper it's right. like human spirits. He's not one of the darker ones. But, you know, I mean, I'm also not well-versed in voodoo. And I feel like if you are very, very well-versed in certain aspects of paranormal, you respect it. But I definitely respect voodoo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Voodoo scares me. I'm going to be real. Yeah. It does me, too. But maybe that's because I'm just not very well-versed in it. Mm -hmm. You know? I've known people that have practiced it. And it just, I don't know why it scares me so bad. It's kind of like indigenous. I feel like it goes way, way back. You know what I mean? Like, or than I think we might realize. Yeah. yeah. Well, and even like Haitian, like there's different like branches of it. But I do think how it was portrayed in AHS was amazing. I thought that was amazing. Um, okay, so you interesting. I don't know why I, I felt the need to like bring this up, but mm -hmm. with like my ancestry, um, my my father got some of his um, results back and of course like it changes all the time but discovered that he is 27 percent um aztec yes yeah and i'm very curious as to what aztecs like what their religion was we're wanting to do a stream on this eventually oh yeah i want to i want because wanna i sure found that out that i have lineage from mayans mm -hmm. which is the bad one right um, I don't know if it was necessary. I mean, they're both pretty dark. Great. Like we, why did we both have to come from the dark? Like, great. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's Cat and Crystal. It's fine. I'm back. I'm like, bubbly! And then it's like, evil. <laughs> like, it's evil. like, sacrifices. <laughs> like, we will put you on a stone bed and let your blood come completely out. Like, literally, it's dark we shit. actually do have a ritual table like that in New Hampshire. Well, does that say something? That's all uh, American Stonehenge in Salem, New Hampshire. <sighs> That's dark shit. You know what I'm saying? Dark. Yeah. So yeah, Kat and I want to do a future stream on Aztec and Mayan because we both found out that we have lineage from both of those. So mm -hmm. we can compare more ancestral trauma. Yay! <laughs> Online therapy. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Um, the Axe Man was in, um, was in New Orleans too, and that was part of uh, Coven. 
which was, um, I mean, the real axe man was a thing. Like, they think that he, he liked being portrayed in the media because at the time they were putting out, like, warnings of, like, we, like the axe man says he won't come get you if you play, like, jazz music or something weird. Yeah, they released his letter. Yeah. He, like, wrote a formal letter. Which is a huge mistake, I think, because they, I think serial killers love that. They like the attention. Mm-hmm. So he probably felt power, more powerful when he did that. So, Stop. anyway, that is really scary though to think some dudes going around with an axe killing everybody. Yeah, no, that's not gonna fly. It's pretty terrifying. I mean, here's here's the thing though. Like, what if someone is armed with an axe themselves? You have like an axe standoff. You <laughs> like comes to the house, so you're just like press. How does one break in the house though? Like, get a guard dog or something. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like. I know they didn't have security cameras in the day, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or like, I bet it was a t- place where people just, like, leave their houses unlocked and, like, their windows on. You know what I mean? Like. Different time. Different time. Yeah, I know. Now, I didn't realize the Countess was off of someone that was real with AHS. I'm looking. I, really? Yeah. It says she was from, I think it's England. Hang on a second. Let me look this up. Um, let's see. Lady Gaga, who was the one that performed, because you know, because I didn't watch it, so I don't know this one. Um, but it was, I think, this woman, 16th century Hungarian woman, who was known as the Blood Countess, and she was like from an extremely like you know sophisticated aristocrat, wealthy family, and she would torture peasants and sort of drink their blood, thinking it would like keep her keep her young. Yeah, she's actually portrayed in a lot of. Um, shows. She, there's actually a Salem show. I can't remember where it's on. I think it's on Hulu. Um, and she is also portrayed in it as like having an immortal life by you know, drinking human blood. Well, and she like said she different. bathed in the blood of her victims too because it would also preserve her youth if it went through her pores. And I was like, Ugh. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Interesting. Interesting. Well, it's really messed up, but it's interesting. <laughs> um, that she... And I don't know how accurate this is, but this was some on some like quick research I did when I first saw this season. Mm-hmm. Um, she had like really messed up ways of like getting the blood on her. Ew. I guess is it like so, is it like hostile like the movie Hostel where they like cut her throat and it just like pours on her in a bathtub? Like hanging from the ceiling. Yes. Ugh. Sick yeah. man. I couldn't get through Hostel either. I, I saw that scene. I was like done once again. Done. Can't do it. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. No. I like I, it's so crazy because like as an empath it's weird like oh yeah I can go like chill with ghosts and demons all day but when yeah. it comes to like the really torture shit that we see in movies and, and like films and like I, I have a really hard time sitting through it I impact off of it like that scene in hostel I was like oh my throat like <laughs> Jesus I was like I can feel it like it's what you said it's with true. um asylum you're like i felt like i was getting a lobotomy I, 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 was, I could literally feel it like i could literally feel the electroshock therapy uh. of it. like that's it that startled me that mm. startled me because it wasn't even just like watching it and being afraid it's like i could legitimately feel it Ugh. and that freaked me out really bad so i was like we're gonna just take a step back here boo that's when you're a good filmmaker when people are like can feel what you put on film <laughs> like jesus god yeah that was uh. the only one i don't know that was, that was weird. That's that was weird. very weird. Maybe yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I don't, that This this one I couldn't get through either, but that was, like I said, hostile. So, um, but yeah. it says that she, she claimed she was a vampire by bathing in people's blood. And um, she oh. was, she, what? Since she was so high an aristocrat, she was never held accountable for all the murders that she did because she was really wealthy and, like, part, high part of society. Yeah, she literally did whatever she wanted. And Madame LaLaurie... Mm-hmm also showed that she did the same thing really you don't remember that she had scenes of having like a makeup oh like with a, blood like padding on her face yes yeah. So, like yeah. a facial Ugh. so i'm wondering if that was a correlation to hotel mm. meaning like they sometimes have those weird tie it together mm-hmm. characters and stuff like that i wonder yeah. if that was in real life we'll have to research that because that's interesting I wonder, like, so, you know, thinking of places like that, like the LaLaurie Mansion, which is in New Orleans, like, it's been done a lot because um, paranormal shows obviously go there. But I do wonder, like, it's always men going to these places. I know that if we went in these places, we would get completely different evidence because 
you do women. you do ask yourself, you go into the Lori Mansion as like three really strong females, you Elfie and I I don't think we're gonna get the kind of evidence other people have gotten. I because I think she's gonna be like, Yes, I like strong women, that's what I was. Like, you know what I mean? Sort sort of attitude. So it would, mm-hmm. I'm just interested in seeing what kind of evidence we would get with these places. Maybe we will. You never know. Oh, man. You never know. So then there's another one based off of H.H. H. Holmes, which is obviously Hotel Cortez. This is the one I couldn't get through. This is the one I, I didn't realize it was based off of H.H. H. Holmes, or I might have tried to sit through it. His childhood home is in New Hampshire, and it's like 18 minutes from me, and I want to go visit it. Like, have you really driven down. by it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not blocked off, but it's not lived in it's in um gilmington why don't you go make a tiktok driving by yeah i should i really should i'm actually thinking about calling the people that own it because i I do believe it is owned like obviously but no one's like inhabiting it no and it it is considered a historical like landmark like they have a whole cat out there i know i just need to go make a drive by yeah god that sounds dangerous i need to make a drive by I'm sorry, guys. Tomorrow I'm busy. I'm, I'm going to run to H.H. Holmes' house. Sorry. I'm just busy. Holmes' house, y'all. Sorry. I'm going to go have a hang sesh. You know what I'm saying? So, H.H. Holmes, he was dark, man. See, and that's what was... Wasn't he a Taurus? I don't know, but he has a freaky mustache. <laughs> it's like, like... It's the pedo mustache, isn't it? Oh, it's like... Or like, like a... Animal on his face. Like, woo! Pedo mustache. Uh, like, child rapey mustache. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he... It says majority of serial killers are Taurus. I'm offended. I'm offended. I Any was... airy? No, not not usually. Uh-uh. Yeah, I just, I literally looked up H.H. Holmes Taurus, and then all of a sudden, the first article is like, majority of serial killers are Taurus. You know what? I, I feel you. Because I've been pushed to the edge a few times, okay? And I, I, I understand the feeling, okay? I could run somebody over and not feel bad about it some days. because it's, And I don't mean like with the car. I mean with my legs. I could stomp over you. Because I just get sick of people's shit some days. You know what I mean? Disease. Anyway. Yeah, AJ yeah, Tolbs was. It looks like he was. Um, I would like to find out. Like, I, we should do a series talking about, like, astrology more. I think so. Because it would be interesting to correlate, like, sun signs with moon signs and, like, rising signs, too. Mm, very Wouldn't true. it? Very yeah. That'd be fun. So, anyway. Um, going back. So, AJ Holmes, that was good. How do you think that, um, what is the, what's the guy that plays all these characters? What's his name? He's like that young actor. How do you think he does with all these characters? Oh, incredible. I do too. Incredible. Yeah. He, um, I'm trying to think of his name. I put him on that, like, horror crush video I did for TikTok, but I can't remember what his name was. Now I'm now I see now I'm gonna um, obsess about it. it. AHS characters, got it. I've got it. Just hang on. Oh, Tate L- Langdon. No, that's not Tate right. Tate Langdon. Oh, Evan Peters. Evan, Evan Peters. Peters. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. There you that go. That was his character name. Sorry. Um, yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, he always does amazing job with stuff. Yeah, he's really creepy. Um, oh, I didn't see the the season of that, like, I Abandoned Island either, which is, like, the, a newer one. I didn't see that one either. Because it just didn't, it didn't appeal to me. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's, like, yeah, the 16th century either. island that, like, became, like, the, it was, like, creepy. It, like, everybody, like, got up and walked away from this island one day. Like, all these 16th century people or whatever. Um, yeah. yeah, I didn't watch that. Um, Ernie and Betty Hill one is the one that I... Which one's that? ...found interesting. Um, it's closer towards the top, but it, it's also from, that's from Asylum. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, like, I didn't finish it, but I did read up on it. Mm-hmm. And that couple, um, is, they're from New Hampshire. Really? And oh, wait, is this the UFO thing or is this something else? Yeah, this is the okay. UFO thing. There's literally a landmarker that I, I think I have a picture of myself there. Why don't um, you do a TikTok up- on that one too? I should drive by. I really do. Yeah. I need to get out of my house. <laughs> I know you have usually if you're here we film together or like I was planning on coming up to New Hampshire too this year and then you know freaking pandemics just and that too but um yeah that was really interesting and like Betty more specifically is the most interesting the woman because yeah because her dreams of being abducted are like so I have to I have to share this can I share this for like yeah sure yeah do it 
So, um, so wait, okay. go back. So this this is like a cr- couple that was a part of the series, but it was based on a real life UFO session that basically happened in New Hampshire as a husband and wife. They were um, an interracial couple. Okay. Um, and yeah, just like amazing, uh, amazing, interesting situation occurred. So mm-hmm. um, they were abducted. Um, they claim to be abducted by extraterrestrials in a rural portion of New Hampshire mm-hmm. uh, from like September 19th to the 20th mm-hmm. in 1961. Mm-hmm. And, Sorry, um, I don't know why my dog the first... That's okay, because aliens, you know. Yeah, um, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no aliens. It was the first widely publicized report of alien abductions in the United States. So it was the first one to be reported mm. in Lincoln, New Hampshire. Mm. Uh, there's a historical marker there and the energy there is strange. But isn't there a ton of abductions and UFO sightings in like the whole like New England area? Yes, but that's, this was the first one. Okay. This was literally like the first one in 1961. Okay. And um, interestingly enough, just to like jump ahead for a minute, the husband died at the age of 46 um, at, of a brain hemorrhage, a cerebral hemorrhage. Caused by what? Uh, I don't know. And then, but she didn't pass until 2004 at the age of 85. Um, but she, she, she passed away of cancer. Wow. Cancer. Okay. That's weird. Cause they say if you have abduction, you're like, um, high levels of radiation are admitted to you. So if there was like a brain aneurysm or something that could have been correlating, same with cancer, right? Yeah weird so um betty so betty and barney were like put in separate rooms um to talk about their experiences and the reason why that this was a credible considered a credible um situation is because at the time being an interracial couple they literally put this in their statement that they wouldn't want to draw attention on themselves Right. Um, so if they're doing this well, you could get killed like for being interracial at that time. Right. Right. Yeah. So it was very like that's why they took it as credible, which is messed up. But um, I do believe it happened. Uh-huh. And so Betty, um, two days after, I'm just gonna like read the segment. So it says two days after the alleged UFO encounter, Betty began having a series of vivid dreams. They continued for five successive nights, um, and she never really like recalled the dreams afterwards um but she was put into like certain types of hypnosis in order to like relive the scenario Mm -hmm. um and they both had very similar dreams but hers was much more vivid than his so she was probably spent more time with in regards to like alien life she she was there longer Mm -hmm. And um, she dreamt that a man, similar to the others that Barney had mentioned in his statement, Mm -hmm. um, entered to conduct um, her exam with the leader, Hmm. is what she referred to him as. And that Betty called this man the examiner. And he said that he had a pleasant, calm manner. And um, the leader and the examiner, they both spoke to her in English. Um, And it seemed like not like not very good English so she that's why she had um a difficulty understanding them um and she was also in a very drugged like state like she was very in and out of consciousness um the examiner told Betty that he would conduct a few tests to note the differences between humans and the craft's occupants um he seated her on a chair and this was literally what she said um or how you know the FBI was in in interpreting it Um, He seated her on a chair and a bright light was shown on her. The man cut off a lock of Betty's hair. He examined her eyes, ears, mouth, teeth, throat, and hands. He saved trimmings of her fingernails, weirdo. Um, After examining her legs and feet, the man used a dull knife similar to a letter opener to scrape some of her skin onto what resembled cellophane. He then tested her nervous system and he thrust a, a needle into her navel. Um, which caused Betty at ag- anti- like agonizing pain, and she was in pain ever since that happened. Hmm. Um, whereupon the leader waved his hand in front of her eyes, and the pain vanished. Um, the examiner left the room, and Betty engaged in conversation with the leader, and she picked up a book with rows of strange symbols that the leader said she could take home with her. 
She hmm. also asked where he came, and he pulled down an instructional map dotted with stars. And this is almost done. There's only a couple more sentences. So is this like cosmic map, essentially? Not like not like no. America or like... No, like... Like, like constellation. Literally. Yeah, like okay. a, a map dotted with stars. And um, it says, in Betty's dream account, the men began escorting the hills um, from the ship uh, with when a disagreement broke out. The leader then informed Betty that she couldn't keep the book, stating that they had decided that the other man, the other men, did not want her to even remember the encounter. Betty insisted that no matter what they did to her memory, she would one day recall the events. Hmm. She and Barney were taken to their car, where the leader suggested that they wait to watch the craft's departure. They did so, and then they resumed their drive. Apparently they had been driving um, 35 miles, completely blacked out. Hmm. Like, they landed in a certain part of New Hampshire that they, like, they have no idea where they were. Wow. Yeah. But see, I don't so, think they're all, I, th- I don't, I don't know, like, I, we've talked about aliens in the past. I don't think all aliens are bad. I think that the government's made us more afraid than anything. But this is a perfect example of the leader being kind to her. Right. And say, I mean, no one wants to freaking get abducted. I'm not, I'm not saying go get abducted, okay? Right. But, um, Follow you know, Stephen, Dr. Stephen Greer, uh, though, if you're interested, because right. he's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, he, he was showing her the answer she wanted, which was where they live, and you can take this book if you'd like. And Should I share my it. abduction story? Yeah. Oh, yes. Do it. I've never do done it. it before. You know it, don't you? I do. I do. Do you think I should? I don't know if I should. I think I had an abduction once. Pretty sure. Like, 99% sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had... Um, this was, like, a few years ago. So, I've been on YouTube. So, <laughs> aliens know me. Peace. Hey, what's up? Um, <laughs> glad the extraterrestrials are watching me. I was having a problem, like, um, I'd say maybe four years ago. So, four, three or four years ago. You were around when it happened, weren't you? Years ago, yeah. 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 Um, I had... Uh, I've, I've always had issues once in a while with ovarian cysts mm-hmm. and um, it, I've never been diagnosed with PCOS I don't have pregnancy problems like nothing like that so it, it's never it's not serious but I'd had a cyst on one of my ovaries and I've had it since like literally I was like 18 or 19 and if you don't get the cyst most of the time cysts on your ovaries will go away they're very painful when they burst I've had some burst you've had them burst they're really bad I think you're gonna die yeah, you, you'll literally be hospitalized for a burst cyst. Like, it feels like your uterus is going to explode. Um, but yeah, it had had an um, ovarian cyst, and it uh, essentially didn't burst by itself, which is rare. And it ended up turning into something called a dermoid cyst. Well, most of the time, women have dermoid cysts. It was basically like, uh, you know, skin, you know, like a hardened skin ball, sort of just like by your ovary or whatever. So I'd had um, ovarian cyst and it had turned into a dermoid and um, I went and got it checked and I, I actually went to like eight um, OBGYNs. Like I was, I mean, I think Kat was around at the time. Like I was literally like going, getting all these opinions because I was like, I'm not settling with one opinion. And like half of the OBGYNs were like, oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. And then the other half were like, you need to get in surgery right away. And I was like, I don't know which one to do. Cause like I haven't had kids yet. They, and then they're telling me if you have surgery, there's like a 50% chance that ovary is going to be damaged and it's still functional. It's st- you're still having like monthly periods. So, you know, and then I'm like, I don't want my ovary damaged, like shit, you know what I mean? Like, and, um, the ovary was causing pain or, you know, like where it was and like the cyst and, um, didn't know what to do. I was just effing stressed. Didn't know what to do. It was causing pain, scared to get it removed. I was like, I'm just going to wait it out and, uh, you know, like wait till I have kids and deal with it then. And hopefully like the, the biggest fear that the OBGYNs were saying was like, if you don't take care of it it's obviously been growing at somewhat of a pace at some point it could turn into like an actual tumor size where like we're really having a problem and I was like great so I was really stressed going to these doctors couldn't figure out what to do couldn't decide what to do I was getting ready to go to like uh LA has um LSU and like all these other places you can go uh, really good doctors and I was like about, about to do that and I had this horrible fear one night. I was in bed, and I think I texted you and told you. I was like, I just have this feeling I'm going to get abducted. 
Yeah. Like, I just know it's going to happen. And yeah. Kat's like, I'm, bitch, are you on drugs? Like, are you okay? <laughs> like, she's you, What's going on? Do you need a call? Like, what's happening? Yeah, I was really stressed about it. Like, you can t I remember, I literally remember, like, not going to bed till, like, 3 o'clock in the morning that night because I was just, I knew it. It's that, like, intuition yeah. of just knowing. And it was in my house where I'm at. And, um... I uh, I finally like passed out because I was so tired. I was just exhausted. I just like I'm not like I I can film you know when we're doing paranormal late, but like when I'm that stressed, I'm just like ah, I can't sleep. I'm like, and um, so I finally like, passed out, and I had this dream. We're gonna call it a dream that uh, um, a really bright light was like in my backyard and something came in and removed me and I, I woke up in a ship and at bright lights I was on a surgical table and I have doctors above me predominantly one uh, looks very human-esque to be honest with you um, I would say more either like a pinkish gray toned skin like but really generally speaking looked human honestly um, he was wearing like a surgical mask and I was like, I couldn't move. And I remember like being very groggy and like looking down at that area, if you know what I'm saying. Couldn't see anything though because I was covered by like a blanket slash a sheet. And um, he telepathically spoke to me and was like, you're going to be okay. Like, like we're not doing anything wrong. Like you're going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. And I was like, no idea what's going on, honestly, no idea. And just remember being like, okay, it's gonna be okay. I don't know why, because once again, it's a dream. We're gonna call it a dream. And then I just laid back down, passed out, woke up the next day and had a little teeny incision scar on that side, very teeny, not even, not even a half an inch. Like I can't, like literally it was like this, like, I mean, a little pinch, you know what I mean? And I was like, am I crazy, cat? Like, did I, am I nuts? Like, something's up. So I, I had another appointment going into the doctor, and I went back, like, two weeks later to another doctor. And they have to do, uh, not to get vulgar, like, a internal uh, exam with a ultrasound, okay? And they were like, we don't, we don't see a dermoid cyst. We don't know what you're talking about. I remember that phone call when you called me. It was creepy. And I was like, there's no way. Like, they had my medical records, you know, from all these other doctors that I'd had exams at and, like, had, like, literally taken ultrasound, internal or, or ultrasounds, like, and they were like, yeah, there's no dermoid cyst. And I was like, does it just go away? Like, normal cysts can burst and just go away, but dermoid cysts are, like, material, like, matter. They don't just go away. And they were like, yeah, could have. And I'm like, your body's going to just absorb a... You know, what I, like, right. but I, I wasn't going to tell him what happened, obviously. But yeah, I haven't had pain since. And that was the end of that. Damn. Did I feel feet? Like, and I remember I called you the next day and I was like, dude, I'm so sure I got abducted last night. And I'm sure you were like, bro, you were just paranoid as fuck last night. Like, just calm down, you know? But like, yeah, I literally, I think that happened. Like, I don't, how else do I explain that? I don't, was I in fear of what happened? No. And honestly, that's the pivotal moment when I started doing more research on UFOs and aliens, and that's when I was like, dude, they are not here to hurt us 100%. Yeah. And then Stephen Greer, Dr. Stephen Greer, started following him, like, researching it, and, like, yeah, I just... I'm not saying some of these, like, horror stories don't happen, but, like, I think that it is somewhat government-controlled to make us in fear of, like, other races. I agree. So anyway, I don't know, take from that what you will. All I have to say is I don't know where the hell that cyst went because it should still be there. Well, yeah, It's floating in space. It's, it's floating <laughs> in the abyss, okay? I'm gonna so. hit an astronaut in the head. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? It's an asteroid sex cyst. It's just gone. It's like, yes. <laughs> take it back. Where did this material come from? You guys know what this is? Should we test no, it? Actually the cyst is sitting in Area 51, guys. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just, it's in a glass case right now. Yeah, um, it is creepy, though. You know. But, it, yeah, it was like, I don't know, man. I, don't I believe it. I believe it. I don't know. I mean, th things like that and with all, how all those stories are so similar, 
when it comes to it being like a hospital room. Well, it, it is weird because it's also like I was scared to get surgery because I don't want my other ovary taken. That takes your your fifty percent chance of like pregnancy down, and like I don't know if I'm having kids, but I want that decision to be on me. I don't want that right taken away. And so I was like, I'm just going to have to deal with the pain. And then it was just, like, gone. Like, but how, And I'm talking, like, the cyst was, like, literally larger than a quarter. So I'm not talking. It was just teeny. Like, this was a big... And, and imagine that on the size of your ovary, which that organ is very petite and delicate like a flower. And I was scared. I didn't... And so whatever they did when they did the other ultrasound, they're like, everything's there. Because I was like, oh, my God. Is my ovary gone? <laughs> like, she's they took the ovary no the ovary's there so i guess that just means that we don't have the like precision technology that they have wherever they're at floating around with my cyst up there you know what i'm saying floating in the milky way <laughs> floating Shit. around oh my god <laughs> all right our streams go y'all listen thanks for Literally. saving ghost girl diaries queen crystal oh my god it's dead fuck um <laughs> normally i try to not cuss on this but i feel like we're just there today you know what i mean Oh, God. oh, we're not allowed to cuss? I mean, I just don't do it. Like, I try to not to, because you can get blocked through, like, the algorithm. But you know what? I don't know, man. You know, I'm just here to be myself. That's about it. So. Well, I threw heavy up bombs. I know. That's why I was laughing when you did it, because I was like, damn. She's, she's I don't swear often on here. <laughs> Off camera? Yes. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I'm tired up, okay? Screaming. Forgive me, YouTube. Forgive me. Forgive me, baby Jesus, black yep. magic. Yeah. Um, Elfie is on uh, vacation this week. Elfie, we love you. Thanks for tuning in, even though you're on vacation. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Next week, Elfie should be back. I don't even know what we're doing next week, but it's fine. Um, I feel like we've just been winging it. It's kind of going. It's kind of good. It's kind of good. It's, and it's working out. Um, work is about to pick up on the other side of us, uh, not social media, not podcast side. So... I don't know what's going to happen over the next three to four weeks, to be honest with you. If there's a chance that we're not live on a Friday, we are busy, boo, and I can't do anything about it. And I'm not going to kill myself trying to get on a podcast just because of everything else that's going on. The next, like, mm, three months are going to be pretty bad for us, just so everybody knows. Um, all three of us, LV, Cat, and I. So, um, yeah, make sure you find us on TikTok. Hopefully, we should be here next week. Fingers crossed, no issues. Um, whatever we're doing next week, you'll find out about it later. <laughs> and uh, any signing off messages, Kat? We love you. We love you Thank guys. You for, Thank you for being here and, and dealing with our random A, a but. <laughs> What? I just caught myself. Did you hear that? I just caught myself. No, I mean, at this point, I don't think it matters. You know I what I mean? Like, uh, but, yes. And, uh, yeah, we just, we appreciate the support. Yeah, we love you guys. Thanks for following us on TikTok. I have, like, 4,000 views on my Beetlejuice video. It's so good. On Instagram. I was like, what? It's so good. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad everybody likes me. I made a Beetle, if, you, if you're not following me on social media, I made a Beetlejuice-inspired look. So since you guys loved it, I'm going to do more. I think I'm going to stay with, like, horror characters or, like, ghost characters, though. Do it. Like, I, I don't want to do just, like, random shit. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you make sure you guys follow us on social media. We love you guys. Thank you for being here. As always, make sure you download this as a podcast. It will be uploaded, hopefully, tomorrow. Um, and that's the T. That's the mother T. <laughs> now I'm all paranoid. I'm just like, words oh are really hard right now. That's Fine. the T. Yeah, follow us on social media. We love you guys. And as always, we will catch you guys next time. Bye, guys.